The Gorgon's Head by Anne Terry White. Acrisius, king of Argos, came home from Delphi with a heavy heart, for he had received a dreadful oracle. The priestess told him that no son shall be born to him, but he shall have a grandson, and by his grandson's hand he'll die. Planning to evade his own fate, the king hid his only daughter Danae from the sight of men in a house of bronze, all sunk underground and carried out his cruel scheme. When afterwards, even though Danae was isolated, a son was born to Danae with Zeus as the father and hid the baby from her father's sight. The king discovered the baby and was more than ever filled with fear. He dared not to kill little Perseus. Instead, he placed Danae and her son inside the chest and set them adrift upon the sea. When the dawn came in the island of Syracuse, Dictys, a fisherman, saw the chest and took both of the pitiful mother and the helpless child. And there, in the fisherfolk's home, Perseus grew up. Because of Danae's beauty, King Polydictus, Dictys' brother, fell in love with her and made her his wife. But the king hated Perseus and challenged him for a bold adventure, and that is to cut Medusa's head. Perseus accepted the challenge and began his quest to find Medusa. In the middle of his perilous adventure, he saw Hermes and helped Perseus for his search. He told the demigod to be equipped with weapons and seek for the great women. He also gave his sword to Perseus, for Medusa's scales are hard as metal. Perseus took the sword from Hermes, when suddenly, a sudden brightness in the sky beheld the goddess Athene descending toward them. She gave her bright shield to Perseus, for he will use it to look into it as he approached to do the battle, and will see the Medusa reflected as in a mirror. Perseus journeyed farther, came to the end of the earth, and found the Grey Women. Danae's son knew what to do. He took the eye from one of their foreheads and snatched it away as one of the Grey Women passed it to her sister. The Grey Women raised a fearful clamor when they realized that the stranger had their eye. Being helpless without the eye, in the end, they grudgingly told Perseus the way to the nymphs of the north. So again, Perseus went on, this time to find the happy beings that possessed the three priceless things he needed. And when the nymphs heard the reason, they were willing to give him the winged shoes, the helmet that would make him invisible, and the magic wallet that would become the right size for whatever he wished to carry. Fully equipped now, Perseus light sped through the air, over land and over sea, to the fearful island of the Gorgons. With the help of Athena's instructions, Perseus swept down to the nearest shore and took the chance to cut off Medusa's head and thrust it into the magic wallet. Over lands and people, the hero flew on and on, but now, he saw a sight that made his heart beat fast with excitement and wonder. Fastened by chains to a cliff by the sea was a beautiful maiden named Andromeda, the daughter of Cepheus, king of Ethiopians, and Cassiopeia. The oracle says that the sea god has sent a serpent to prey upon our people, and only her death alone can appease his anger. Perseus made a contract with Andromeda that she will be with him forever if he can save her from the serpent. Perseus bravely killed the serpent and saved Andromeda's life. In reward for his action, a wedding was celebrated between Perseus and Andromeda. While the marriage feast was at its height, Andromeda's uncle, Phineas entered and interrupted the celebration. The rioters went wild, weapons were hurdled, and the feast turned into a battle. Phineas bought his men in fight over Perseus. Perseus realized that bravery could not withstand the numbers against him, so without a doubt, 
he drew Medusa's head out of his wallet in front of his opponents. About 200 men then became stony statues, including Phineas. When at the year's end, Perseus sailed home with Andromeda, King Polydictus would not still believe that he had actually slain Medusa. For the very last moment, Perseus showed Gorgon's head to cruel Polydictus. Perseus gave the horrible head willingly to Athene, who kept it forever. Perseus went on to Argos to take part for games were being held in Larissa. When Perseus turned to throw the discus, he threw it so hard that it swerved to one side. It landed among the spectators and killed an old man which happened to be King Acrisius. And there at the gates, it was the oracle which Acrisius had received in Delphi, was strangely fulfilled.